What is up guys? I hope you're having a great day today. So today we're going to be talking about a new slicer that's coming out to the market very soon. I was contacted about two weeks ago to join a new group on Facebook that's closed and the title of it was the Lychee Slicer. Now I have never heard about the Lychee Slicer before so I was very happy to hear that there was going to be a new slicer coming out to the market and I was also happy that I was chosen to join this group. Well yesterday I actually received a trial key for the software and this is my first impression of the lychee slicer let's go so the way i'm going to approach this is i'm going to break it down into different sections so the first thing we're going to be looking at is the installation then we're going to be looking at the way the software is laid out the ease of use the support placement the slicing and the actual export of your file when i install this software one of the things that really stood out to me was the quality of this software. It is very evident that a lot of work was put into this and it's almost as if it's a professional written software done by a major company. And to me, that level of quality and customization within the software speaks a lot. I also really like the color theme within this software. I like that dark look and it's reminiscent of some other slicers that you have used in the past. I really like that dark look with a contrasting model on the build plate. For quality, it's the small details that count. In this slicer, if you change from one printer to the next, it's actually reflected on the shape of the build plate in the screen that shows the level of detail that went into putting this software together when you go into the menu the first default printer that's there is the anycubic photon if you hit the plus button you will given a slew of famous printers that you can add from the elegomas to the epax x1 to the longer you name it as long as it has a chi2 board you can use this slicer to generate output for your printer. There's also a setting which will allow you to set a specific resin for a specific printer. I know a lot of groups online have an Excel sheet where they actually keep the different types of resins and the different settings for that particular printer. This software actually allows you to keep that database within the software so you could apply that resin for that specific printer. So let's talk a little bit about the layout. The way the screen is laid out is very intuitive. On the left, you have your model manipulation tools like move and auto settings, auto support, arranging of your models, etc. At the top, there is a small wizard. And at the left, there are model manipulation parameters for the tool that you choose on the left. At the bottom right of the screen, it gives you a synopsis of which printer you're actually using what some of your slicing settings are like the layer height it also gives you an estimate of what the model height is in the build area and it tells you which resin you're actually using this slicer has most of the tools that you would find with most modern sla slicers one of the things i really like about this software is as the model is being manipulated there's an animation that actually shows you how it's being manipulated on the screen I really love that. Another really nice thing I like is the auto orientation tool works really well. It actually rotates your model and puts it at an angle. And for small models, it has worked perfectly for actually orienting the model on the build plate. For large models, it ran into the same sort of problems that other slicers have, which it's very difficult to orient a really large model on a build plate so that you can save the height of the model. But it did a pretty good job overall. Another good tool is on the build plate, which allows you to align the model directly on the build plate. In terms of ease of use, I really, really like the wizard at the top of the screen that actually walks you through the process of slicing your model. I'm a really big fan of that. Also, there's a really logical workflow. And I think for new users, they would like to know how you place your model, then you proceed to do your supports, then you proceed to slice, and then you proceed to export. And that's exactly how this is laid out in this software. So one of the real tests for a slicer, in my opinion, is the auto support placement and how easy it is to modify these supports once they've been placed. And we're gonna take a look 
at how this slicer generates auto supports and how easy it is for us to go after the fact and make changes to these individual supports before we actually slice the model. So like most modern SLA slicers, this slicer allows you to make changes to nearly every aspect of your support. You can change the tip, you can change the thickness, you can change where it starts, if it's within the model, if it's from the build plate, you can do all of those customizations within this slicer. One thing I didn't like, and I wouldn't say it's a disadvantage, but it would be nice to have a little diagram explaining when you make certain changes to which parameter, how it's going to affect the actual support. When you're placing supports, one of the things you usually do also is you raise your model so that you can add supports at the base. This helps with what you call an elephant foot after it has been printed. And while this slicer does allow you to do that, I couldn't find where within the slicer where you can set the actual height for the lift. It does allow you to lift in steps, but it doesn't allow you to make that change. One thing I didn't like also was in other slicers, you have a setting of a small, a medium, or a large support setting out of the box. This slicer does not give you small, medium, or large. So what you may have to do is you may have to generate a small configuration for small, generate a configuration for medium, and generate a configuration for large to be applied to your model. Also, one of the best features in this software is the ability to edit supports on an individual level, changing all parameters after the fact. One really cool feature is if you have a model that's symmetrical, you could actually add your supports to one side of the model and this slicer will allow you to actually mirror those supports on the other side of the model. That's an excellent feature. The software will also allow you to just look at the tips of the supports, the middle of the supports, or the base of the supports. That's a really good view if you wanna take a look at the model through the supports, but still see where they actually anchor onto your model. One thing I like is after the model is sliced, it actually tells you how many supports were placed within the model. So exporting is pretty straightforward. You can export as a 3D file and there are three options for that, or you can export in a format that your printer may be able to use. In this case, the only option is a .photon file. So here is a list of my final pros and cons for the lychee slicer. So there you have it guys, my first look at the lychee slicer that should be coming out pretty soon. Should you get it? How does it compare to other slicers? Well it's going to be up to you. This is going to be a paid option and it pretty much does everything that the other slicers do. Of course there's some more customizations but it's really up to you if you're willing to pay for that. Have a great day and happy printing. The first thing I'm going to I installed it last night meters for the tool that you choose on the left so just on the left